Imagine a world where the most powerful people are constantly plotting against each other, where love and loyalty can shift as quickly as the wind, and where the fate of entire nations hangs in the balance. This was the world of Cleopatra, the last pharaoh of Egypt, and Mark Antony, one of the three most powerful men in the Roman Empire. Their story is filled with drama, war, and intrigue, and it's a tale that still captivates people today. But before we dive into the heart of their story, let's start with a shocking moment that sets the stage for everything that follows. In the year 40 BC, Rome was in a state of chaos. The city was famished, plundered, and exhausted. The streets were filled with hungry and desperate people, and the once mighty Roman Empire was on the brink of collapse. But in the midst of this turmoil, there was one place that seemed to be thriving, Alexandria, the capital of Egypt. Here, a young and ambitious queen named Cleopatra was watching the events in Rome with a mix of concern and calculation. Cleopatra was not just any queen. She was a brilliant strategist and a master of manipulation. She knew that Rome's troubles could be her opportunity, and she was determined to use every tool at her disposal to secure her own power and the future of Egypt. But there was one man who stood in her way, Octavian, the young and ruthless leader of Rome. Octavian was her mortal enemy, and he posed a constant threat to her rule. The only man who could stand between her and Octavian was Mark Antony, one of the three triumvirs who ruled Rome. Antony and Octavian had a complicated relationship. They were both powerful and ambitious, but they also had a history of rivalry and mistrust. In 40 BC, they made a pact to end the civil war that had been ravaging Rome. As part of this pact, Antony agreed to marry Octavia, Octavian's sister. This marriage was supposed to cement their alliance, but Cleopatra knew better. She understood that this marriage was just a political move, and that Antony's true loyalties lay elsewhere. Cleopatra was right. Antony was still deeply in love with her, and he had no intention of staying faithful to Octavia. In fact, he was already planning his return to Egypt. Cleopatra didn't need to make any advances. She knew that Antony would come back to her. She also knew that the Parthians, a powerful enemy of Rome, were causing trouble in the east. This distraction was a blessing in disguise for Cleopatra, as it kept Rome's attention focused away from Egypt. In the winter of 40 BC, Cleopatra received a visitor who would play a crucial role in her plans, Herod, the young Judean tetrarch. Herod was a loyal friend of Antony's and a skilled military leader. He had just escaped from the Parthians, who had invaded his territory and sacked Jerusalem. Desperate for help, Herod made his way to Alexandria, where Cleopatra received him with open arms. She knew that Herod could be a valuable ally, and she offered him a command in her army. However, Herod declined and instead asked for a ship to take him to Rome, where he could seek help from Antony and Octavian. Cleopatra's decision to help Herod was strategic. She knew that Herod's presence in Rome could be a double-edged sword. On one hand, it could strengthen her ties with Antony. On the other hand, it could also give Octavian a chance to build an alliance with Herod. Cleopatra was playing a dangerous game but she was confident in her abilities to manipulate the situation to her advantage. In the meantime, Cleopatra was dealing with another important matter, the birth of her twins, Alexander Helios and Cleopatra Cellini. These children were not just any babies. They were the offspring of Mark Antony, one of the most powerful men in the world. Cleopatra named them in a way that emphasized their connection to both the East and the West, invoking the sun and the moon and linking them to the legacy of Alexander the Great. This was a bold move, and it sent a clear message to both Rome and the Parthians. Egypt was a force to be reckoned with. The news of the twins' birth caused a sensation in Rome. People were already talking about Cleopatra's relationship with Caesar, and now she had added another powerful Roman to her list of conquests. Octavian, who was always looking for a way to undermine Antony, must have been furious. He knew that Cleopatra's children were a threat to his own ambitions, and he would stop at nothing to eliminate them. As the years passed, the situation in Rome became increasingly tense. Antony and Octavian's fragile alliance was constantly tested by their mutual distrust and ambition. In 38 BC, Octavia gave birth to a daughter, but the joy of the occasion was short-lived. The Parthians continued their advance, and Antony was forced to send his best general to deal with the threat. Meanwhile, Rome was gripped by riots and unrest. The people were angry and hungry, and they blamed Octavian for the chaos. Despite the challenges, 
Antony and Octavian managed to maintain a facade of cooperation. They appeared to be on good terms, but behind the scenes the tension was palpable. Antony was frustrated by Octavian's ability to outmaneuver him at every turn. Octavian was a master of spin, and he could turn any situation to his advantage. He even managed to secure a marriage to Livia, a woman who was already pregnant with her previous husband's child. This marriage gave Octavian the social status and connections he needed to challenge Antony's power. In Athens, where Antony had set up his headquarters, he tried to distance himself from the chaos in Rome. He lived a life of luxury, dressing in Greek clothing and passing himself off as Dionysus, the god of wine and revelry. He allowed Octavia to be hailed as Athena, the goddess of wisdom and war. These tributes were galling to Cleopatra, who saw them as a direct challenge to her own power and status. But despite the challenges, Antony remained determined to maintain his alliance with Octavian, even if it meant swallowing his pride. Cleopatra, however, was not content to sit idly by. She continued to gather intelligence and plot her next move. She knew that the key to her survival was to keep Antony on her side, and she was willing to do whatever it took to achieve that goal. Herod's arrival in Rome and the birth of her twins were just the beginning of a much larger game. The fate of Egypt, and perhaps the entire Mediterranean world, hung in the balance. As the story of Cleopatra and Mark Antony unfolds, it becomes clear that this was a time of great upheaval and change. The lines between love, loyalty, and power were constantly blurred, and the stakes were unimaginably high. But through it all, Cleopatra remained a formidable queen, a master of strategy, and a woman who was determined to shape her own destiny no matter the cost.